can you tell me what led to this dramatic increase in propulsive force output? And also, how much farther do you think you might be able to take this using current design technology? Sure. <clears throat> so what we have here, like I said, is a graph of our progress. It doesn't re represent all of the tests, and it certainly doesn't represent all of the models that we've tested. That's numbers close to the thousand. But here's a few select uh, that we put together just to kind of show the highlight of the progress. So from 2016 to 2020, like I said, that was basically, those are basically the conventional asymmetrical capacitors that you'd see in the textbooks. The big advantage, uh, the big uh, jump in 2020, 2021 was a, a few things. The first thing was the, uh, the presence of the high vacuum system. So now once we move things into high vacuum, um, now you can eliminate some of the sources of noise and errors, like the ion wind, any kind of gas discharge, corona discharge, glow discharge, brush discharge. You try to eliminate any kind of current leakage, essentially current leakage. Anytime there's current in our system, the force goes away. So it's very odd. The second thing is um, the type of thrusters. We went away from the asymmetrical capacitor thrusters to kind of the two-dimensional thin film type. Okay. So we had different dielectrics uh, sandwiched next to each other. That's a different way to uh, make an asymmetrical field on one ground plate versus the other high voltage plate. It's a very simple way to do it. And that's also covered in the patents. 